Hey everyone, this is Chuck Hogan from Your Best Life and welcome to the Spanglish World Network on Zingo TV, channels 250 and 251. Please remember to download both the Zingo TV app on the respective app stores on iOS and Android devices. Now while you download, make sure that you rate and leave a comment. The app's completely free. Zingo TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire Fire TV Sticks, and Roku Roku Sticks, also on all smart TVs 2016 and forward. So I know I say this every week, but I hope you're excited because we have the most amazing guest on today. Uh, she is a fellow host of her own show. And, you know, Paola is one of those people that when you meet her, she, you just know that she's filled with wisdom. She always has this gregarious smile. She's upbeat and ready to serve. And what I love is her vision right now of helping people find their purpose. Like it, it's such a beautiful thing to be able to meet a, I'll say a, a cohort in crime who's helping the world become a better place. And so, Ella, thank you for being here tonight. I really yeah. appreciate you on. Um, thank you, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now, Paola, remind me, where do you call home? Oh, where do I call home? Mm, where my family is at. <laughs> I'm in Oklahoma right now. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Well, and I'm in Dallas, so uh, in fact, we'll be in Oklahoma in a couple weeks. So it's oh, it's yeah. it's a beautiful place to visit. I love it there. You know, it, it's interesting when you get to kind of like the heartland of America, this this kind of core of the country. There's, I'll say, earthy values and lots of family-oriented exchange. And it's such a blessing, isn't it? I mean, it's been such a beautiful place to raise a family. Yes, that's what I am very grateful for because I'm originally I'm from Mexico. Yes. And being here and with three kids, it feels really good being oh. able to, to stay in this town and raise it's my wonderful. kids. And again, it's such a beautiful testament to having options, opportunities, and the availability of just to be able to expand and grow. Because it's one of the things now that I actually believe that when we're creating purpose in life, that for many of us, it really comes down to possibilities. Yes. Oh, like, yes. It's like, because if you feel like the glass ceiling's over you and you're not able to expand or grow, it's like, uh, okay, I saw this go in a whole different way. Yeah. And it would you, and I'd love to get your input on this. What would you say about someone who's like going, but what does it have to do with your purpose? It has everything has to do with your purpose <laughs> because that's your pool. That's the reason why you're going to get up in the morning and do the workout or take your kids to school or have that hard conversation at times with your kids mm -hmm. or whoever you need to have the conversation with. If you're, if like, if you want to be an awesome leader, then we have to put in that in practice. And that's our purpose, you know, be good leaders for our kids. And, you know, we got to do the job. Oh, definitely. And, you know, I thank you for that. that. That's such a beautiful testament to who you are and, and the belief systems around finding purpose. There's so many people who I believe now are lost and they're trying to find, why am I here? Like, what, what am I supposed to be doing? And I was like, Ooh, that's a loaded question. And I often come back and say, well, who do you need to be? Who do you need to be? And they go, well, what do you mean, Chuck? I say, well, I don't know. I'll ask Paola. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I did give them a response. And, yeah. and, someone, and again, love to, love to hear your feedback on this and your feed forward. I oftentimes say that uh, there's a lot of people who are doing their best. Yeah. I go, okay, that's great. What does that mean to you? And how does it make you feel when you're doing your best? And they go, oh, well, it can be tiring. And I go, okay, but do you feel rewarded? Not always. Like, oh, why? They go, well, because, you know, I chose a career where I'm just doing what people tell me to do. There's these rules. It's what's expected. And I, I have to do it this way. And I go, you have to do it only one way, one specific way. And I go, well, it's better if I do. I don't get in trouble that way. And I go, okay. And if you were being your best, would you do it differently? Wait, what? If you were being your best, would you do it differently? And they're like going, I would. Right? Great. How would that make you feel? They go, 
really good. Is that simple? And I go, yeah, you pretty much, the quality of your life is how you feel. So Paola, what do you say to someone or what advice would you give someone when they're going, okay, my friend Paola, how do I find my purpose? Because it's lost. I, I left it in the forest someplace. I was walking in the dark and I, I forgot my purpose. I would say, get to know you, mm. accept you, and know that there are many choices out there that we're not stuck, that the way we grew up, the way we were programmed and we continue to be programmed can change. There is, you know, there is a choice out there for you to make. Every single day there is a choice. Like we were talking about marriage a while ago. We'll be 20 years married here in a few days. You said you've been married for 36, 36 years. years yes. Yeah. And it's a choice. You know, it's like, it's a choice to say, I, I, I choose you, you know, I tell my, you know, even if I don't say I, like with my voice, there's mornings where it's like, I just look at him and I said, I choose you, you know, yes. so I choose to love you and the day begins. So it's a choice. We have a choice every day. We have a choice. Absolutely. Well, I, I get up in the morning and I turn to my wife and I say, I'm not going anywhere. And she goes, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we still have fun and we still it's it's I, I actually believe we're closer now than we've ever been and to your point it's it's literally knowing that we get to yes have yes to, right because there are some people who are stuck in have tos and I go wow how did you get there and they're oh I don't know um we got these things called rings we made these things called vows. They said, I said, I think she said, I do first. Yep, ladies go first. And then I said, I do. And all of a sudden, we have kids at a house and two dogs in a mortgage. And it's like, uh huh. And how's that working out? They're like, going, it's busy. I'm doing a lot. I go, okay, great. And how do you feel? See, I, I'm, I'm a weird guy because I bring people back to feelings. And they're like going, why do you do that? I said, well, in fact, I don't even ask people how they're doing. I ask them how they're feeling. Yeah. And they're like, that's an interesting question. Why? I said, well, I found out a long time ago that in your unconscious mind, that if you ask someone how they're doing, you'll get a meta report. You will get a literally a laundry list of things that they're doing that have nothing to do with the quality of their life. It's just a laundry list of the, of activities. When you ask someone how they're feeling, you actually get to bypass all this confusion and you're going to the core of them, which is residing here. And it's like, ooh, okay. Well, you know, I felt frustrated lately. Well, so what does that mean? What does it mean? that I think and I feel that I could be doing more or being better. So, I, okay, so what would that take? So I go, are you taking me through a process? No, I'm asking questions. This is called a conversation. And the strange part about it, Paola, we used to do this all the time. When, you know, sitting around when there was, I don't know about, you're much younger than I am. So I remember the days of, of TV where like I was the remote control. It, there was no clicker. My father would say, "Go over and change the channel." And I was like, Fun. Okay, that that's that's my responsibility. I'm the eldest child. I control the channel switching, and so but I kind of laugh about it now because I go, "We used to shut the TV off during dinner, and we didn't have to worry about having cell phones around. We didn't have to worry about having all these devices because a phone call had a cord connect to it." And the only privacy you had is as long as the cord reached. That's a, that's the amount of privacy you had. Yes. You know? So yes. it, it was a different time. So dinners and engagements and conversation became part of the day. Yeah. And I wonder how many families out there that are listening to us tonight have that kind of same ritual. Ooh. What are some of your rituals for catching up with your children and your spouse that your family has adopted that help elevate that sense of fulfilling your purpose 
by being an amazing wife and mother and patron and matriarch of your family because we wear so many different hats right yes definitely what are some of the what are some of the things that you love to share with your family that you're creating examples for your children as well i love to have one-on-one -on -one time with each of my kids and at the same time when we're all having a good time as long as they're laughing and enjoying you know each other the activity then of course as a mom i am having a blast so with my oldest he's 18 and right now he, he has a responsibility to take his sister to dance but i go with him okay so he drives you know drive us to the dance studio we drop her off and then after that He's like, you want to go get coffee? He's 18. You know, he, I let him lead. I was like, sure, let's go have some coffee. You know, and then we sit down and for that 45 minutes and I get to hear if he wants to talk to me, you know, I get to hear how the day went, what he's thinking, what he's what, what he's planning. Beautiful. And yes. And then with the, uh, my six year old, she's a girl. So she's all like, what are we going to wear tomorrow? What she's going to wear tomorrow? And how school was, you know, so it's easier with her because she's younger. Yes. And I give her, you know, that quality of time. And I try to do it every day. You know, like we, between our busy schedule, I try to be present. If she has to tell me something is like, I force myself <laughs> to be like, okay, if some, you know, like, because you might be, I might be cooking, I might be doing something. And I'm like, okay, no, tell me, tell me, you know, five, 10 minutes are, I'm all yours. Yep. And then I have a teenager about to be a teenager. He's going to be 13. So he's more challenging because he likes to be in his room playing with his friends online or on his phone, talking to a friend. Uh, now it's like they, they do the FaceTime, you know, and they talk and they play at the same time. It's different. Oh. So I was like, okay, can you please give me 20 minutes? <laughs> oh, no, you have to schedule it. You're, yeah. You know, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, in between levels, can you pause the game yes. so I can share some time with you? Yes, yes. And sometimes he doesn't want to. Mm. Uh, but, you know, like there is his, you know, here's your favorite spaghetti. Let's just sit down and tell me how how's your day? How are you doing? Oh, you know, food is currency. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. I mean, it's like yes. going to get someone's attention. You're like going, but that's OK. <laughs> Yes. Come over here. Look what I got. <laughs> yeah. Especially with boys. That's what I found out. And and so you have a, two boys and, two, and one girl. Two boys and one girl. And she's in between. She's the youngest one. Okay. She's got it. Got it. She's yes. six years old. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, we have a 23, a college grad uh, boy, and then a 20 year old daughter in university. Uh, and then we have a 17 year old. So my youngest. So. Wow. It's um, it's humbling. it's humbling, but I love those rituals that you have. And when they were young, I used to do this thing, which I loved doing, and I miss this actually. And you know, and there's no reason why I can't do it again. I used to take each one for a weekend, and we go just one on one, and just just it, it didn't have to be anything crazy. Like we go to San Antonio, and then hang out at the River Walk, and then go to Sea World one day, or go down to Houston to the Johnson Space Center, and hang out and then go to Galveston for a day. And these little trips were so endearing because it was just the two of us. And it's that proximity and the openness and then all kinds of questions like about my childhood. And I'm from Japan originally. And okay. so having a, an Irish father and a Japanese mother was interesting in and of itself because when people see the pictures of my parents, I, my mom's like 4'11 and a half, 85 pounds, portable. My dad is, you know, redhead, blue-eyed Irishman, and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> what you get? And so, oh. I I say that kind of tongue in cheek because it was so nice to be able to have them interested. And what really warms my heart too now is hearing them have conversations with, like, their grandmother, their you know, abuela on my wife's side, who's from Nicaragua, and and Nana and Papa on my side, and very different conversations but it's so cool because you can see how they kind of postulate someone's purpose like what what makes them happy and i go well what if your purpose was just be a happy god-loving individual that participated in life at the fullest level and had no regrets 
where they go, wait, what? Your purpose isn't to be like a millionaire or a billionaire. Your purpose isn't to be an influencer. And I go, if that's what you choose to be, but is that really who you are? Oh, wait, you think there's some people who are influencers who that's not their real identity? And I go, well, what they do to make money isn't necessarily who they are at their core. Yeah. Huh. So what decided for you to go into your occupation and help other people as well? I had one mentor mm -hmm. that made me feel loved. Like I felt so much love from this mentor, so much compassion, so much gratitude mm. to be like, you know, like he made me feel like you're okay. Yes. The way you are, you are just fine. You know, there are choices out there, but you are just fine. Life, it's fine. And I felt this like love, like, I, I don't know if I'm describing it correctly, but it was, it's, it's an emotion, mm -hmm. a bundle of emotion, of good emotion that he allowed me to feel mm. that I'm like, I have to give it back. I can't keep it. I have to Beautiful. give it back. And I felt this calling. It's my responsibility to give it back. And, you know, I went through growth because mm. at first it's like, oh, I've never done a video before or, or going live, you know, it's like and the growing process began, began for me, but it was a moment of a lot of love that I felt from this uh, conference. And, and I'm like, I have to give it back. Wow. That's beautiful. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I grew up Roman Catholic and, um, and yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, broke elementary school, the white shirts with the blue corduroy pants, the old boys Catholic high school did the whole nine yards. And it's interesting because our faith has a lot to do with our purpose. And I realized many years ago when someone asked me, that, what's the purpose of your life? And the entrepreneur in me, the business person in me was like, oh, you know, I want to be a shining example to communities and lead co corporations through great moral values and constitution and ethics and presence. And I was like, Tuh. okay, like, okay, that you might as well be doing the Miss America way as you're going by because it sounds like a coined response, right? Oh, yes. And then I realized that simplicity is key and what kills execution is complexity. So getting out of my head space into my heart space, and I prayed and I asked, I said, what's the answer? And it came like that. And I said to be a loving, guided gift from God. And so they go, yeah, but what does that mean? What will you do? And I said, anything I'm compelled and called to do. So when you start to live in a space and a grace where you feel that the purpose of your life is to serve, and that doesn't mean that you have to be a pauper. It doesn't mean that you have to give it away for free. What it means is, is that what you do is you find value, create value, and deliver value. Yes. And people will find the level of compensatory value that comes along with it. And so will you when you do not devalue yourself. Yeah. So if I were to ask you, Paola, what does it mean to you to be curious and not critical? It's to find out your perspective, you know, the way that you see it, you know, because I might be looking at it from the bottom up, but you might be looking at it from the side. Correct. And I'm like, hmm, let me see, let me see, Kate. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> right. Because when you think about it, it's almost like if you look at, if you were able to travel in space around the globe yeah. and they go, it's the same world, yeah. but where it's sunrise or daytime here in Australia, very different point of view. So at some point in time, it really comes down to what are the measurements of differences because to your point, it's perspective, and everyone has an opinion about everything yes. as we attach meaning to different things. Yes. So are there any pet projects, like things that you are so compelled by right now, where you're spending most of your time? Yes, I am. I'm preparing uh, to write a book. Beautiful. So... 
that's so that's, awesome. yeah so that's kind of like my next big project and you know i i am continuing to develop my role as as a leader you know helping at the church right now they're calling me to play a role and i am playing full out because that's awesome. why we're here to do right play full out yes uh, as life is happening so it's happening for you and not to you so the advantages are there right when opportunities avail themselves and and that's a big part of this too we started noticing that for some people they were getting stuck in the what ifs yeah. well, what if this happens and i go like what like monkeys fly out of your roof i i don't understand what are you talking about they go monkeys fly out of my roof i said well it's as likely to happen as what if yes right? and, only, and it's fear like if if i ask myself well what if this happened i know it's fear that is tapping on my you know knocking on my door and i'm like uh, uh you know it's like i know better you know and like you said with faith it's like i pray and i train myself i pray you know that praying and the training is always going so that i can continue to play full out well, it's interesting because there's there's three beautiful definitions of fear. One is faith everything and rise. So that you faith everything and rise. And it's like, ooh, I like that. Another one is freak everything and run. They're like, uh uh, freak this. I'm uh, I'm out of here. No, I'm not doing this. And then the last one is is that well, we start to understand what fear really is. It's just a false expectation appearing real. And that, that perspective that you spoke about was that we've actually attached a meaning to something that may not even, even be real, but the brain does not know what's real or perceived. The 10 million year old monkey brain that God put in us, he goes, you know, I better give these humans the ability to recognize a saber tooth tiger. That is a coconut tree. That's a saber tooth tiger. Run towards this because there's fruit and you can climb it and you get away from this. But if you don't get away from this, that fear factor. And so people go, well, how will you know there's a tiger? They go, oh, you'll hear it. You'll smell it. You'll see it. They go, if you see it, it's too late. So we start to get triggered by different anchors. They were like, okay, because if again, if I'm always turning my, my attention towards the fear, yeah. you're always going to get more of it because yeah. your brain doesn't know any better. So it's only looking for evidence. Like, is there a tiger? Is there, you're like, all this beauty around you, are like, tiger. You're like, it is not even a tiger, it's a squirrel. Yeah. So, what would you say to someone that is debilitated by fear? To stop it, to say stop, <laughs> stop every, you know, right, be conscious of it. Say stop. Yes. And fill it in with something exciting. And I am a true proof of that. Right now, my 18 year old is driving and he's like, Mom, I'm going to church. Mom, I'm going, you know, with my friends. Oh, yeah. And when I hear the phone ring, you know, I worry and fear used to, you know, knock on my door and continues to knock on my door. And I'm like, stop. He met Adam Sandler. He's going to tell me all about it. Stop. You know, when I get that fear, I said, stop. He's going to tell me that something awesome happened in his life. You know, so, so I turn it around yes. when I'm conscious of it. So I invite all of our beautiful audience, especially if you're a parent, we mm. worry about our kids and we, we can help it, you know, by turning it around, by saying, stop, you know, build that scotoma in our brain and fill it in with good things. Yes. It's like he's gonna tell me something amazing, something awesome happened to him, and he cannot wait to tell me. So I turn it around whenever, when I detect that it's you know bothering me, and I'm like, okay, this is not you know it's a negative thought. <laughs> so stop. It's beautiful. It, 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 I always say to folks, slow down and breathe. Just slow down and breathe, yeah. and ask yourself, how are you feeling? Yeah. How are you feeling at this moment? And they go nervous. Okay, what does that mean? Well, I'm just concerned. Okay. So what are you concerned about? Well, are they all right? You know, what would make you feel better? Do you need to feel a different way? They go, yes, secure. Go, okay. So what would have to happen in order for you to feel secure? And they go, oh, well, 
maybe just know that they're okay. I said, well, then text them. Just ping them for a moment, yeah. not to bother them. Just say, think it of you. Want to make sure you're having a great time. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I said, oh, and if you have an Apple device, you could go, you could go ahead and locate them and just make sure and just go, yeah, they're there. He's at church. I'm sure he's having a wonderful time. So to your point, there is a, a level of faith though that goes along with all of this. And it's an underpinning. It's the, the fact that you get in a car and you drive on a highway or a road and there's traffic coming this way. And you're like, there's a little painted line in the middle of the road. And there's an understanding. You stay on your side, I'll stay on my side. I go, that takes a lot of faith, right? Because <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, wait a second. And oh, I know, because all three of my kids drive. And I'm like going, whew. Yeah. So when they leave the house, we say, we love you, make good decisions. I'm like, what? I said, we love you. Uh, we got that. What was the second part? I said, make good decisions. And they're like, huh. They go, why do you say that? I said, because you have a choice. And they go, but would we make bad decisions? I said, not intentionally. So it's just a reminder that you get to, you don't have to. Yeah. This is this is part of the influence. See, because as we're growing up, Paola, I have this concept, and I'd love to get your feedback on this. When we're young, we fake it till we make it. Because when you're learning how to walk, you fake it. You're like trying to crawl. You're rocking back and forth. Some people are on their belly. Some people are on their back. Some people crawl backwards instead of forward. It's the craziest thing. And so they're like, oh, oh, yeah, but they're trying really hard. And I go, yeah, they're faking it because they're watching everybody else. And I go, that looks cool. I want to go there, too. If I could just pull myself up and reach the cookie jar. If I, you know, it's like, and it's all filled with possibilities in that very infantile mind and body. And then I go, then they face it as they make it. And it's like, okay, oh, I got up. And now I'm grabbing onto stuff, I'm grabbing pant legs and falling on my bottom. That's why God gave us such big bottoms as babies with diapers. You know, it's like a pool petting. This is good. This is good. And then we get to a point you know, as we get proficiency and we're like, wow, I can actually move. Like I remember when my son turned nine months old. Oh, it was the beginning of the end. Like it, 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 nothing was safe. Nothing was. We have video of him climbing up on the dishwasher, like opening the dishwasher climbing up on the lid and feeling around with his little hand to try and get things off the counter. I'm like, okay, MacGyver. Like, <laughs> oh. so we get to this point where we faith it as we make it. And we have this faith, this belief that there's something bigger than us, that there's guidance, that there's, that there's this, this uniform energy that's looking over us and just washing us and purifying us and creating engagement. And then we get to this point where you and I get to live now, which is beautiful. And we go back and forth between faithing as we make it and believing as we achieve. Because we know there's a higher power. We know there's a higher level. If that's Jehovah, Yahweh, God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, energy, Allah, Buddha, Vishnu, whatever the case might be, it's like whoever the higher power is for you, that energy that resides, the creator, it's like, okay, this is remarkable because now it's unfortunate, but we're living with some people that are dying of thirst and they're energetically depleted. And I go, how can that be when you're swimming in a sea of energy, a sea of love, a sea of guidance, a sea of opportunity? What would you say to someone who's famished right now, who's just looking for some connection to a higher power? I would say life is great. Life is great. Continue to practice to walk until you walk. Because this came from Les Brown. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, I, it blew my mind whenever they ask him this question. And he's like, well, I've been doing this, this, and that, and I have not achieved what I want. And mm -hmm. he's like, he said something similar to like, Keep going because once you walk, you walk. You know, it's like continue. Please continue. Get a hold of your higher power because it's easier for 
it's been easy for me because I watch my family, you know, go to church, go to mass and, and pray. Sure. It's easier for me to say, but wherever you're at, get a hold of something. Get a hold of something and keep going. Do not give up. Keep going until you walk. That's beautiful. You know, there, there's a, an important facet to this, right? And it is, it's, it's the power of language. So like neuro-linguistics programming, if it's neuro-encoding, if it's neuro, you know, NAC, neuro conditioning. Um, I've had a lot of exposure to Joseph uh, McClendon and, of course, B. New Keller, who's a very dear friend of mine, and, um, and some amazing, amazing uh, strategists over the years. And I've got to collaborate with many of them. Um, and what I started to find was is it's so imperative because we talk about this for other people, and yet we don't, we don't eat our own cooking sometimes. And I say, wouldn't it be beautiful if you could meet people where they're at? Yeah. and not where they're hoping to be or where we wish them to be there's this concept of hopium and it has become a very very addictive drug more more potent than sugar more addictive than caffeine and hopium is where people are hoping good things and prosperity will happen for them and they go well is hope a bad thing i said hope without action is hopium and that can become challenging. And, and confusing. And, oh, extremely. And someone said, well, how do you cure hopium? Said, by being an active participant in your own salvation. That's beautiful. Because at the end of the day, another technique, another insight, distinction, theory, hypothecation, if not exercised and put into practice, it's like a weight. The weight is just a mass. What you do with the weight is what gives you results. So you can decide to lift it, push it, curl it, throw it, bounce it. I said the, all these different engagements will give multi-purposes to that particular, if we want to call it tool. But if I just take that tool and I put it on my shelf, which is what most people do with their books, and with their pamphlets and even notes that they've written down, they do not put into practice what they have been preaching. And yet they go out and try and teach other people this and they haven't even put it into practice themselves. I was like, going, wait, that's like me going to flight school. And because someone gave me the control, the yoke of the airplane for about an hour when we were in the air, but they, I didn't take off and I didn't land. They did that. But after six days, I'm like going, I could teach somebody else to do this. I'm like, you teach them once. That's it. And they go, what do you mean? Because you'd probably crash. So you'd only have one time. Was it worth it? So when we say repetition is the mother of all skill, yeah. do you have an epiphany in a moment? And from that point forward, you no longer need to pray. You no longer need to practice that connection with the higher resource. So what would you say to someone like, oh, yeah, I did that once. I'd say it's not enough. Uh, I say that you're probably thinking, but I'm a good human. I, you know, I do good. I'm a good person. Okay. So show me your habits. Yes. You know, because it's a challenge to develop a habit, right? It, it, it's determination and discipline has to be involved. So a lot of people, you know, we can talk about finances, the percentage of people that don't know how to deal. And I was one of them. And I've told, you know, I remember saying, but I'm a good person. Why? You know, it's like, why is my bank account in, in you know, $5? You know, I made all the payments. Yeah. I'm a good mom. I tried to be a good person, good wife. But it's like, why? Well, because my behavior towards money, you know, I wasn't disciplined with it. And but now I am because I care about it. I'm, I'm still, I'm a good person, sure. but I, I, I'm adding new skills. Same thing with my marriage. I can tell you it hasn't been beautiful for 20 years. It's been challenging, you know, especially at the beginning and the middle of it. So I was a good person. I'm, I choose to be a good mom. I choose to be a good wife, but sometimes it just did not click within our marriage, right? Because I didn't have the good habits, the good skills that that would communicate to him that I loved him. Well, so that's beautiful. And you bring up a great point. And and I'm I'm going to 
ask does was it the habits or was it cultivating a culture and conditioning where now we can create better communication right because here's what's interesting about this habits it's i i used to have the privilege of uh of being a head trainer for um an event for tony robbins called gyls and it's for young adults and we have an amazing speaker i love giving credit to source and a friend of mine marlon smith and marlon has this saying about habits and it's actually an, an acronym it's called repo r-e-p-o-h -E i know and people go this is how you develop a habit he goes the first one the r stands for repetition repetition and then he because he has these movements that go with it too because it gets it into your body and he goes but it needs to be easy easy and he goes you know what makes repetition hard though when there's no pleasure so let's add in some pleasure so he goes pleasure pleasure so he's like repetition it's easy it's pleasurable so when you want to do it all the time he goes yeah so let's add in the O. let's do it often often so it's like wait a second so if you put in the repetition and it's easy and you get pleasure from it and you're doing it often it becomes a habit repo and so i share this with you because here's the deal in the past i thought that in order to have discipline you know it's like conditioning i'm going to go build muscle so i have to do heavier weights i have to lift heavy, uh -uh. ordinary things done consistently produce extraordinary results and i was like ooh. so if it's it, it, it's repetition it's easy and it's pleasurable and i'm like so uh, that's the ordinary thing i'm doing over and over and over again and they go, give me an example. I said, breathing. You don't even think about it. They're like, what? I was like, think about it for a second. They go, I don't want to. I'm breathing just fine, thank you. I'm on automatic. I'm on autopilot. And I said, that's because your unconscious mind is conditioned. Your heart beats over 100,000 times a day. You didn't even ask for this gift, but the good Lord in the universe saw fit to gift you with it. And the Lord is tricky because he actually added something in, and this is scientific. He actually added in sensory neurite molecules, cells that line the bottom part of your heart. And did you know, Palo, that these cells mimic the exact same composition of the cells in your brain? I didn't know that. And you only have about 35,000 to 40,000 of them in your heart. Oh, wow. That's it. But this is when you go, oh, my heart's heavy. Oh, my heart's light. It's full. Oh, oh, I'm disappointed. I don't know why. I just feel off today. It's like, well, maybe your intuition. And for women, there's an association between the sensory neurites and their gut. And they go, it just doesn't feel right. Honey, I don't think we should do this investment. You know what? There's just something off about this person. I can't put my finger on it, but I can feel it. And I'm like, going, well, okay, then honor your feelings. No front, no offense to anyone. It's just like, okay, not for us. It's like, okay, cool. Why? I can't put my finger on it. But I've also learned to trust that when my wife has intuition, I have one of these and two of these. I use them in the order that God gave them to me. I have more of these than this. I keep this shut and I open these and listen. I wish I would have done it more early in our relationship because it probably would have saved me millions of dollars. <laughs> True story. Oh. I share this because to your point, there's this conception about keeping standards in that in our Christian faith, we have these very strong principles and belief systems. I go, we have 10 commandments. We have, you know, basically rituals and rules that we abide by. And I go, that's great. And people go, yeah, so how, yes, Chuck, how do you use that? And I said, it's my moral compass. Yeah. Well, for you, Paola, when you're living in this space and grace and in its identity as a mother and as a wife, who are you as a woman? As a woman, I am someone that it's, 
breaking through barriers. It's someone that is choosing to shine God's light. Well, I am an instrument. I choose to be his instrument. And I continue to train myself every day, be better, every day, be better, because there's always an opportunity. There's always a choice yes. to grow or not to grow. So as a woman, I choose to be better and better each day. I remove the fear. You know, if I feel that someone does not want to connect, it's okay. You know, it, we were meant to connect and I continue to see where I'm heading because where I'm heading is way bigger than myself. And I notice, like for any women out there that might get their feelings hurt because someone might not want to connect with you. Mm. It, it's okay. See the bigger picture. See where you're heading because you're bigger than, you know, th than that relationship that you wanted to work, but it didn't work. Sure. So, you know, it's like, that's who I am. It's like, I'm continue to choose to grow and be a better instrument of God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, it, it is so important for all of you listening out there that you understand that you're not broken. Yes. No one is. And there'll be times when you may not feel as full, compelled, accepted. And please remember, as Paola just so beautifully illustrated, that what someone else thinks about you really is none of your business. That as much as you love to be able to connect with everyone, and connection is a huge part of our identity and our being, understand that the relationship that you have with the eternal, with the energy around you, what flows in you, through you, with you, around you, that you get to share this with other people. And this may sound a little contradictory, I'm going to ask a favor of all of you, and that is be selectively selfish in making yourself a priority. Yeah. Now, why? Pela, you serve so many people, and you serve at a high level. So can you remind the listening audience how you take care of yourself? I pray. <laughs> I drink plenty of water. I eat, you know, fruits and vegetables, try to, to keep my temple. My body is my temple. So I try to, keep, you know, try to work out, keep, keep it on the schedule. That's how I grow. I continue my trainings. I train and I train every day. You know, I listen to, to Chuck, please listen to this podcast because you will grow of the one word, the one phrase that you get out of it, it will help you at least to rumble on your head and better that relationship with your kids, with your husband, with your coworker, your spouse. That's beautiful. Uh, you know, I, I would love to remind everyone that when you are finding and creating your purpose, remember you're not your doings. There are things that we feel that we need to do that we're called to do and that you get to do yeah. and when you understand that you can be doing your best but not being your best that when you're being your best you'll always do your best so the gift is slowing down a little bit not always feeling like you have to be pushed to the have to's and acknowledging the get to's yeah. right I get to I get to exercise my faith. I'm not limited. I'm not I'm I'm not being chastised publicly for exercising my faith. And it's it's a little frightening right now because there are places in the world that we don't hear about where this is happening. Um, we received word in Nicaragua that priests are being arrested. Oh wow! I, it's that I'm like, wait, what? devout holy men who have dedicated their life in service to god their mission is to serve other people and because they pray because they give grace to god because they spread the good word they're being incarcerated wow. so i share this is that's the devotion that's the commitment and the connection that people have to their faith and I espouse to you that, again, what someone else thinks about you is none of their business because they probably don't even know you. Yeah. They don't know the real you. 
They may see actions. They may see, and they're having a reaction to things that you in your occupation or within the scope of your responsibilities have been asked to participate and facilitate it. So if someone's feeling judged, Paola, what are some of the ways that you have found for you that you could open up space to feel more connected to self and create clarity for those that you love? I ask myself, you know, let's say there was an interaction and you didn't feel that connection or you felt that rejection is like, were you doing it with love? Mm. You know, were you bringing love? Is that what you were feeling? You know, gratitude? Were you, you know, do you have your faith? integrity and courage mm. that's my that's like that's one of my compass when i feel the guilt where it's like oh is this something i did and then i go back no no no, no. you know i'm love yes. i'm gratitude because i choose to be grateful for every single second life is happening to me this interaction that i didn't feel good about it it's happening for me for a reason yes. but it's like go back to your like your identity like your ground get grounded whatever grounds you in my case is like i ask myself it's like you know, gratitude, integrity, faith, love, you know, and courage. Because yeah. courage will make us grow. <laughs> oh, it does. Well, and, and I would say that it, it takes courage to get on the other side of fear. Yes. That that limitation of self and vulnerability is probably one of the most underrated and most blessed engagements we can have. And people go, wait, are you crazy? Like exposure? And I go, yes. Why not? If not now, then when? So, uh, Poyo, I mean, I, this I, well, you and I could talk for days. I, I mean, I, I, I can feel that in you, my sister, and I appreciate that. Um, what would you say, as, as we're getting ready to wrap up, what advice would you like to leave the listening audience? We're here to give you a hand. Get up. Like, get up right now. Get up. We're here to give you a hand. The one word, the one phrase you heard from this show, you know, choose one word, one phrase that will help you get up with that strength because life is beautiful. And yes, you are a beautiful human. And maybe, maybe you just might need to change your habits towards money, towards your, you know, family, towards your, uh, workplace but we're here for you this show was created for you to sh you know we're, to sh we're sharing our experiences and our growth but we're giving you a hand today get up life is beautiful and enjoy the journey absolutely Paola thank you so much you know I want to remind you all too to Paola's point find mentors find people who are actually going to hold you accountable and help you elevate uh, I've spent the last oh my gosh 35 years in i'll say self-development in life enhancement and i don't call it you know personal development i go because what am i developing more me so it's actually life enhancement i'm just enhancing the life as gift that i've already been blessed with yeah. so reach out to paola reach out to us you know paola is there a website is there a place where people can come and find you Yes, my website uh, and email is paola at paolagethry.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. I'm there. I'm here to serve you. Oh, With a cool. question, you know, do not feel like, oh, she's going to charge me. No, just ask me a question and I'll share with you, you know, based on that question, my, you know, my experience. Love it. Love it. You know, I'm going to remind everyone, too, that you can look us up at yblnow.com. It is literally about, again, you are the company you keep. So I have chosen to surround myself with remarkable people. Like Vinu is a member of our community. She's also a strategist with us. And the reason why I bring this to your attention is it's not enough to just get really successful in business. It's not enough to just to develop healthy habits around money. Money literally will assist with money issues, but it will not save your marriage. At the end of the day, Faith, family, fitness, and finance are four fundamentals. And we've added two interesting ones as well, and that's fun and fantasy. Again, if you're going to make it a habit, it needs to be easy and fun. It needs to be easy and pleasurable. So at the end of the day, take time for yourself. If you're looking to grow a business, please reach out to us. 
we actually have an entire curriculum that will help you move further, farther, and faster so you can develop yourself. Because a rising tide raises all ships, but if in faith, family, fitness, and finance, one of them is being anchored and the others are rising, they all suffer. And so you can have the most blessed, beautiful relationship in the world, and other areas may not be as flourishing irrespective if you're a beautiful, bright light. So I share with you that this show can also be heard on the Spanglish Radio Network. Please check us out for all the news and all the programming. Spanglish World, watch it, hear it, read it, download it, and live it. Taylor, thank you for your time and your gift. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you all.